Hey, hey, this is Mike Butler from Process Engineer School. Today we're talking about common pumps and their uses in manufacturing. Now, you could spend hours going through pumps trainings, and there's many different that are out there. This is focusing on a few of the most popular or most common that are found in uh, processes for manufacturing. And I'm going to talk about how they're used in manufacturing. So first, there's centrifugal versus positive displacement. And we'll talk a little bit about the centrifugal pumps and talk about three specific types of positive displacement pumps. Diaphragm, gear pumps, load pumps. And we'll talk about, give examples about how they're used. So high level, there's centrifugal and PD pumps. There's one major, one of the major differences is that one can be deadheaded, it's centrifugal, and the positive displacement cannot be deadheaded. That means that there is no place for the liquid to be pumped to, so the pressure will spike and uh, can hurt the pump if it is not meant to be that way. Centrifugal pumps typically have lower maintenance. Positive, response, positive PD pumps typically have more, higher maintenance, more parts, more uh, stuff going on on the inside. On centrifugal pumps, there's more flow with less discharge pressure. Whereas on the PD side, the flow rate is independent of the discharge pressure. The flow rate is dependent upon only how many revolutions of the internal parts. Centrifugal pumps are generally more sensitive to solids. PD pumps can handle some solids. In solids, we mean uh, like a paste or a slurry. And the opposite of that would be something very thin and, and watery, like water. Centrifugal pumps are for better for low viscous liquids. PD pumps can hi handle higher viscosities. Centrifugal pumps have more shear to them, uh, means that they are there are more turbulent flow. So more turbulence can be bad for some liquids. So first we're going to talk about centrifugal pumps. High, and centrifugal pump is a high-speed rotating fan blades that whirl the fluid outward. Got it? I know it's not that simple, so I'm actually going to resort to someone who can explain it very well. I found a machine tech blog on YouTube, and, and this guy does a very good job explaining that, so we'll resort to that for centrifugal pumps. From one point to another. But in order to be classified as a centrifugal pump, a pump needs to have two unique components. The first is a rotating disc with curved blade-like veins on it, called an impeller. And the second is a specially shaped pipe, called a volute casing, which contains the impeller and the pump fluid. In the most basic sense, here's how a centrifugal pump works. Fluid enters the pump at the center of the impeller, called the suction eye. Friction between the fluid and the surface of the rotating impeller causes the fluid to rotate. Think about it like this. Just like the friction between the road and the rubber in your tires propels your car forward, the impeller gains traction on the fluid as it spins in contact with it. The rotating fluid is thrown to the outside of the impeller by centrifugal force a phenomenon which causes objects revolving around a center point to move away from the center. This is how the fluid picks up kinetic energy from the impeller, and this method of energy transfer by centrifugal force is why these pumps are called centrifugal pumps. From the impeller, the fluid is released into the chamber of the volute casing and directed around to the discharge outlet, and ultimately into the system. That is a good video, but we're going to stop it there. Um, next, we're going to be talking about how, a, how centrifugal pumps are used in a manufacturing process. So in this setup, there's a storage tank that has some liquid in it, and that is piped to a centrifugal pump, where that pressure is relieved back through a back pressure regulator on a recirculation line to the top of the storage tank. The back pressure regulator works by making that making the pressure on this side of the regulator constant so that it's applying a constant pressure to the flow control valve and the flow control valve is on a uh, is being controlled to be a certain amount open or closed to 
achieve a desired flow rate. And the way the centrifugal pump works is that it supplies a constant pressure for the flow control valve. We talked in an earlier video about how the flow control valve works, so I'm not going to get into that. Uh, one of the benefits of the centrifugal pump is that you can have a second supply line. It can disturb the pressure, so as each process turns off or on, or draws more or less flow, it can disturb the process control of the other one. So it can disturb the pressure supplied to the other flow control valve. A disadvantage is that the centrifugal pump, pump has to be primed. And what that means is, if there were to be air between the storage tank and the centrifugal pump, if you just turn the centrifugal pump on, it will do absolutely nothing. It will just look at you. So you have to push some liquid into the centrifugal pump in order to get it pumping. Next we're going to be talking about a, a very simple pump called a diaphragm pump, which is uh, an example of a PD pump. A diaphragm pump are cheap, they're low maintenance, but the flow comes in pulses. For the diaphragm pump, again, we'll cut over to the Machine Tech blog, which has another great video for diaphragm pumps. Pump number three is the diaphragm pump. Unlike a piston or a plunger, an elastomer diaphragm is flexible. When it flexes, it changes the volume of the chamber, causing fluid to be drawn into or pushed out of the chamber. Our example is an air-powered double diaphragm pump. The pump is essentially two diaphragm pumps oriented back to back with the diaphragms linked by a connecting rod so it can pump on both strokes. One unique property of the diaphragm pump is that it doesn't require a seal because the wet and dry sections of the pump are completely separated by the diaphragm itself. Okay, so we, t we showed diaphragm pumps, how they work, now the way that they're used in a manufacturing process, or at least a common way is as an unload pump. So if a chemical is coming in in a drum, or it could be a drum or a tote, uh, a, a common way of getting the liquid out is by inserting a wand, which is basically just a metal pipe, attached to a flexible hose that goes to the unload pump, and that, that can be typically hard piped to the storage tank. This installation is extremely simple. The benefit of the unload pump is that there's no electricity involved. Uh, these are typically air actuated. It's okay if it runs dry, so as the drum runs empty, you don't have to have someone there immediately to shut the pump off. One pump can handle high or low viscosity liquids. You don't have to have different pumps for different liquids. And it's okay for abrasive or high solids content. You know, you're not going to hurt the pump. It's also okay for shear sensitive materials. So there's not a lot of turbulence going through the pump compared to a centrifugal pump. The next pump we're going to talk about is a gear pump. A gear pump delivers high pressure, precise flow. I found this GIF online which essentially shows what's happening where liquid is entering the pump head from the bottom of the screen and it travels along the outside of the gears and as it arrives at the exit, the space between the teeth ends up getting pushed and squeezed by the teeth of the opposite gear. So it ends, there's a net flow um, you know, in the upward direction. In this example that we've talked about in a previous video, there's a storage tank that goes to a gear pump, goes through a flow transmitter or flow meter, through an on-off valve and into the process. The flow meter tells the gear pump to move faster or slower. And this is great for high viscosity liquids or low viscosity. It is controllable to different flow rates and can run it at low speeds. The next and last pump is a load pump. Load pumps are really cool to look at. So this GIF shows that liquid be, would be entering from the left side and it ends. it's very much like the gear pump where liquid enters in between the two lobes, goes around the outside and ends up being squeezed by the lobe, by the opposite lobe so there's a net fluid movement to the right. And these two lobes are, this is some high precision equipment. The, the two lobes do not contact, do not come in contact, but they come very close. So this is good for high solids content 
high solids containing chemicals and it can also run dry for a period of time. It's also very sanitary. You can run steam through most load pumps depending on the tolerances in order to clean them out after use. And that's why they're also used for unloading. Typically they're used for bigger unloads like coming out of a tanker truck where if you were to use an unload pump it would take hours upon hours but a load pump can get the job done much faster. The load pump would hook up to the back of a tanker and would go into a storage tank. So they, the load pump can run dry for long periods of time. Metal contaminants are usually okay so if for whatever reason there is a bolt in that tanker truck the bolt's going to pass through the load pump probably okay depending on how big it is. It can be cleaned in place or sanitized in place so when you're done unloading you can pass steam through the load pump which will clean it and sanitize it without harming it and lastly uh, and because of that it's considered to be a very sanitary design so we talked about centrifugal versus positive displacement we talked we went into a little bit more detail on centrifugal pumps and we talked about three different types of PD pumps diaphragm gear pumps and load pumps so if you like this video please press subscribe and much more importantly, I would love to hear from what kind of problems you're facing today. I would love to see videos of any issues that you're, you're facing. And we can work together on uh, outlining a, a solution or just sharing some of the learnings that you've, that you've had. So I appreciate you watching this video. Stay tuned for the next one. Again, this is Mike Butler from Process Engineer School. I'll see you in the next go-around. Thanks. Bye.